Hey guys, enough of you asked for this video that I figured it would probably be helpful to you and also to maybe some of you who might be new to my channel. If you are welcome, please feel free to stick around if you haven't subscribed already. If you find this video helpful or enjoy it or whatever, please feel free to give it a like. It really does help the channel out a lot more than you know. <laughs> and uh, if you have any questions for me or if I didn't address any side effects that you may be having, please feel free to leave them down in the comments and I would be happy to address them if they're just something that I forgot or if I haven't had them but I've heard other people in support groups mention things that they say have worked, I will be happy to pass that information along. So these are just the side effects that I have experienced while on either Wego V or Munjaro or the some of the tank compounds. So I started this journey, just a quick rundown for those of you who have not watched my channel a lot. I started this journey at 365 pounds last October. I have lost about 89-ish pounds. And since that time, I have gone through Wego V, which I was on for 24 weeks while I had the coupon. And when my coupon ran out, I switched to a semaglutide compound, which unfortunately did not work for me, but I'm positive that that's because I did the sublingual tablet instead of doing a subdermal injection. So if you have the option of doing a pill or an injection, I highly recommend sticking with the injection because the pill did not work for me. And then when Munjara was approved in May, I heard about the coupon they had and the great results in their trial and I switched to Manjaro. I just wanted to share with you guys the side effects that I've experienced the most and what I have found over the last 11 months that has really worked for me to either keep them at bay or quickly make them abate when they do rear their head. The biggest one that everybody talks about all the time is constipation. You can be in one of two camps. As far as I can tell, everybody has one, either diarrhea or constipation. I will be linking all of the products that I use down in the description. The Amazon links are all associate links. I do get a small commission. It does not change the price that you pay, but you are definitely not obligated to use them in any way, but it obviously would help me out if you did. <laughs> Since January, I have been taking magnesium biconate. I take four of them, which is the recommended dose every night, a couple of hours before bed. Now, magnesium glyconate does many, many things. It actually helps your body to relax so you sleep a little bit better. And of course, because of it helping your body to relax, it helps it kind of to let go of those things. Now, throughout the entire time that I was on Wegovi, I was fine with just taking that magnesium glyconate. As long as I remember to take it every single night, I was regular. Every morning, I went to the bathroom. Now, I didn't go multiple times a day like I used to, but I do think that part of that is just the reduced food intake. But anyway, four magnesium glyconate, a few hours before bed, every night did the trick. Now, once I started the five milligram of Jaro, the constipation ramped back up and I added a probiotic. So the probiotic I take, I take it once a day in the morning. And once I started taking that and I started taking it regularly, then I got back to being regular again. I do still have days from time to time where I don't go much or I go later in the day, but I, I still, I still tend to go every single day, but I have to be religious about it. If I skip one day, even I, I don't go the next day. So that's just something to see on top of. Probiotics are fantastic for your body regardless. They help your immune system. They help all sorts of things. So it's good to take a probiotic anyway, but it definitely helped kind of sort my system back out so that I can get back to normal. The second most common side effect that I've seen um, that I've also, also experienced is fatigue. I very recently, like within the last month or so, have started taking a B12 supplement. The one that I've taken, that I'm taking, I do a lot of research on the most bioavailable type of B12 and the one that would actually help. And that's the one that I have linked in the description. It has been doing wonders for me. I feel more motivated to get things done. I'm feeling less lazy in general. And in general, I just have more energy. I take it every morning. Another really common side effect is dry mouth. We go V, Ozempic, all the GLP ones, as far as I know, and Moonjaro do cause dry mouth. They cause you to dehydrate. So hydration is extremely important, not only for the drug, but for weight loss in general. Drinking enough water is extremely important. On weeks when I don't drink enough, I notice that I lose less weight every single time. The thing that I use to make sure that I drink enough water, I drink a minimum or try to drink a minimum of 90 ounces of water every single day. And I have a water bottle that has timestamps on it to kind of keep me, help keep me on track to make sure that I'm drinking water throughout the day. And that as long as I'm staying on track with that, I don't have issues with the dry mouth at all. Uh, but again, I am hydrating a lot. 
Next we have insomnia. This is a big one. I didn't even think about it being a side effect because I've always had issues with sleeping properly, but it seems like I've been hearing from a lot of people that insomnia is a big one. Several months ago, I started taking a 12 milligram melatonin, which is quite high of a dose. I take it about 30 to 45 minutes before bed and it knocks me out. I wake up feeling refreshed, not feeling like I'm you know, all drugged up or anything like that, like an actual sleep aid would do. Melatonin is natural. It's good for your body. So I will link that one down in the description as well. The other thing that really helps for me because I'm a very light sleeper. So even if I get to sleep, if I keep waking up in the middle of the night, that's going to interrupt my sleep as well. Several months ago, I started looking for something that was going to help me kind of drown out the noise because I used to use those foam earplugs, which work great to drown out sound. But the problem is, is that they increase pressure on your eardrum, which is not really the greatest for you. And they can't breathe at all. I want to say about a month ago, a subscriber recommended to me the Max silicone earplugs and they don't go in your ear. Um, you just press them in here and they form a seal all the way around. Now they don't drown out the noise as well as the foam ones do, but it's not potentially harming your eardrum in the same way either. So I do, I do highly recommend those. The other thing that I hear a lot about is just a complete lack of desire to eat. Now there's lots of things that in the mechanism of action that are responsible for that in the Manjaro, but it is extremely important for you to eat. Your metabolism adapts to the calorie intake that you give it. So if you are only eating six or 700 calories a day, yes, you might be losing a lot of weight in the beginning, but it's going to slow down because your metabolism will adapt to that. And then in order for you to lose weight again, you're either going to need to eat less or speed your metabolism up. Let me tell you, speeding your metabolism up is a long process and it is not easy. So you need to make sure you're getting enough calories for your body to function. If you're the person who just thinks about eating food and you're just like, Ugh, I just can't. I have gone through periods of that. Not a lot, but every once in a while. I highly recommend protein shakes. There are a couple that I've tried that I really enjoy. But honestly, whole foods are best. In the beginning, my go-to for that situation was sliced apples with peanut butter. You would be shocked how many calories are in a large apple. And how many calories are in a couple tablespoons of peanut butter. The good thing is it's good carbs, it's good fats, it's getting a lot of good nutrition in your body in a small volume and a way that's gonna be gentle on your stomach. Obviously, if you're allergic to peanuts, that's not gonna be gentle on your stomach. Almond butter, cashew butter, sunflower butter, there's lots of lots of different alternatives. That's what I found helped me the most when I was in a place where food just did not sound appetizing. I have to eat on a clock. I will eat breakfast in the morning and I'll look down and it's 1.30, 2 o'clock in the afternoon and I haven't even contemplated eating food. But breakfast most of the time for me is less than 300 calories. So obviously that late in the afternoon, my body has gotten everything it needs from the breakfast that it's had and it's time to eat lunch. So more often than not, I find the most helpful thing is to just if I notice that it's like 1.30, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, it's time to eat lunch. This next one was a shock to my system. These drugs make you cold. I have been a hot-blooded person my entire life. I am always hot. I always have been hot. These drugs make you cold. Very cold. I keep my thermostat at 78 degrees in the house when my husband is on at work. And there are still times where I need to put on a sweater. <laughs> so dress in layers. If you're going to a restaurant, always bring a sweater with you. You will regret it otherwise. <laughs> Those are just things that I never had to think about before because cold was always welcome to me because I was always hot. It is, it is a strange sensation to be cold. This next one is a sore spot for me. And if you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, you know, hair loss. There is a lot of debate as to whether the drugs cause hair loss or it's rapid weight loss that causes hair loss. I am in the camp that believes that it's rapid weight loss that causes the hair loss. Myself, personally, I have been losing my hair for years. I know for a fact that Munjaro and Wigobi did not cause my hair loss. Now, has it caused it to worsen? Possibly. Uh, but I believe the majority of my hair loss was from COVID. Now, I have been taking some supplements, but I've only been taking them for maybe three weeks. So I can't really tell you for sure if they're helping. 
my hair has been falling out less. I will say that. So I have included the hair volume supplement that I've been taking and the iron that I've been taking because both of those things have been proven to help with hair regrowth. The hair volume supplement I'm taking has an apple extract in it that has been clinically proven to help stimulate hair growth. I'm also trying some other products, but I'm going to have a whole other video forthcoming on that after I've given it some time to see if it actually works. I don't want to tell you for sure, definitely go out and buy this thing if, if I don't know for sure that it's actually working for me. The hair volume supplement and the iron supplement I will link because those are good and the things that are in them are good for things that are more than just weight loss, or excuse me, than more than just hair loss. Um, and they they will be beneficial to your weight loss journey regardless. Another big one with Munjaro specifically, I did not have this with Wegovy and it's not been a side effect that's been tied to Wegovy that I'm aware of and that is muscle soreness. With exercise, obviously you always have muscle soreness, but I've noticed that with the Munjaro, the muscle soreness is intensified for sure. And I will oftentimes just randomly get muscle soreness like in this arm, like around the side. And it is definitely muscle soreness. It's not a indication of me possibly having a heart attack in case you don't know women don't experience side of, um, heart attacks in that way. Now the magnesium glyconate that I mentioned to you, that is actually very helpful for muscle soreness as well, which probably is why I don't experience it more than I should. I also just take ibuprofen, but for the most part, it's just something that goes away on its own. Another product that is very beneficial is BioFreeze. If you've never used that before, it's got kind of like a tingly, like a menthol type sensation, and that's good in general for muscle soreness. Another thing that people constantly comment about is the way that these drugs affect your menstruation cycle. Obviously men, this does not apply to you, but for us women, I have had an extremely irregular cycle, both in duration and severity since I was in high school. So it's difficult for me to tie this specifically to the Wegovy and Munjaro, but I will say the thing that I have noticed that's increased since I started taking Wegovy is the duration of my periods. I used to have a cycle that would last three, maybe four days max. Since I started Wegovy, and this was specifically Wegovy, my cycles would last up to seven or eight days long. I have always had extremely intense periods, very painful periods, but these, they, they, that pain will last maybe a day, maybe two, and then it just moves on. With the Wego V, that definitely elongated. Now, since I've switched over to the Manjaro, I haven't had as much of an issue. It, they are actually starting to regulate back down closer to those four to five days instead of seven or eight. So, sorry, there's a fly that will not leave me alone. And they've not been quite as painful. I can't say that like completely because there have been a few since I've been on Manjaro that have been pretty intense, but not as bad as when I was on Wegovy. The way to address these issues are pretty much the way you're going to address any cycle issue. Heating pads have been my absolute best friend on my really painful cramp days and they are the only way that they will actually go away. Now, I'm an ibuprofen taker. Ibuprofen is the thing that helps me the most with pain. The mechanism of action that slows your digestion will cause a delay in how long it takes for ibuprofen to go into effect. So if I take an ibuprofen, it's going to take two to three hours before I actually feel the effects of that ibuprofen. That has improved since I started taking liquid gels as opposed to like a tablet or a capsule. So if you're not taking liquid gels, highly recommend switching to that. More than anything, the heating pad is what will save your life. If you've never tried doing that on the lower back or on your stomach, and it will kind of help tide you over until that ibuprofen kicks in. On the days of my period when I know I'm going to have the worst of my cramping, I take that ibuprofen every six to eight hours. Now, I try not to take ibuprofen on a regular basis any other time. For any other pain, I have to be in massive amounts of pain for me to take ibuprofen. So I don't really feel bad about taking it, you know, three to four times in a month, you know, in that couple of days, just to make sure that I'm not experiencing crippling cramps because they are really, really bad. Other common things that I've noticed since starting the Munjaro, I did not experience this on Wegovy, but I have had the last couple of shots itching and redness around the injection site. At first I was worried that, worried that maybe, because it happened two weeks ago for the first time, and then again this week. At first, on my first injection, I was worried that maybe I had accidentally injected where I hadn't sanitized and I was worried it was getting infected, but it 
it that definitely wasn't it it went away there wasn't any kind of signs of infection or anything like that and then i experienced it again this last shot so totally normal just it just it passes on its own not really anything that i felt like i needed to do for it the other one that i have noticed that a couple of other people confirmed when i brought it up on this channel before is i have dryness inside my nose and it leaves like these I mean, I'm sure it's just boogers, but like they're dry and crusty and like irritating. So when I blow my nose or when I pick them out, it, these flies are all. So when I work on getting those out, it can actually bring skin with it because it's so dry in there and it leaves sores inside my nose. And that has happened both on Wegovi and Manjaro. So I don't know if that's just me, that's something that's going on there. It could be a side effect of the dehydration that's going on. I don't know. I just know that it happens. And if it happens to you, that's a thing. Basically, I use hydrogen peroxide on a Q-tip and I clean it out. And then I lubricate the inside of my nose with Vaseline. That's it. I don't necessarily recommend Neosporin. If you don't know, there is a large majority of the population that is actually allergic to Neosporin. And they're unaware. So... I don't, I don't do Neosporin. A lot of wound care nurses will tell you that Vaseline is a much better option for wound care. It has all of those moisturizing properties without the medicinal aspect. So that's what I use. And that keeps the hydrogen peroxide from drying out the inside of my nose. The last thing I want to address, it isn't something that I myself has, have experienced a lot of, and that's nausea. I know a lot of people experience nausea. There is a lot of information in the support groups about it because it is one of the most common side effects of any GLP-1 is nausea. And I do not get it. Now, there are going to be people in those groups that are going to tell you that the reason you're nauseous is because of the food you're eating. That has not been in my experience. If you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you will know that I eat whatever I want in moderation and there isn't any particular food group or type of food that triggers nausea for me. Every once in a while, I will feel kind of uneasy in my stomach. I don't know that I would call it necessarily nausea, but the only times that that has happened have been those times when I feel like I probably ate one or two bites too many of food. So I feel like overconsumption is a more common cause of nausea than the type of food that you are consuming. I've been saying this since the beginning, and that's that the only diet that works is the one that you can stick to. I have been eating the way that I eat since last October and I've lost almost 90 pounds. I have tried every diet in the world at this point. I've tried keto, I've tried paleo, I've tried HCG, I've tried Herbalife, I've tried Nutrisystem, I've tried everything, you guys. This is the only thing that I have felt like I can maintain for the rest of my life. And it needs to be something you can maintain for the rest of your life, not just for the time that it takes to lose the weight. Because the reality is, is that if you're not taking the time that you're losing the weight to teach yourself how to maintain these habits, you will regain it once you stop. So be kind to yourselves. Know that if a lot of you, this, at least for me, this is the first time I've ever taken any kind of prescription medication to help myself with something that wasn't like an antibiotic or a sickness of some kind. So just realize it's going to take time and these drugs do have side effects, but I have decided that regardless of the side effects, it's worth it for what it does for me and has done for me to help me lose weight. I think that's it for now, you guys. I don't, if, I, if I missed any or if there's any that you specifically have questions about, please, again, leave them down in the comments. Again, there are links in the description to every product that I have mentioned in this video. Please feel free to use them or not. It is totally up to you. But I think that's it for this video. Thank you so much for joining me and spending time with me today. I hope you have an amazing day and that your journey is going extremely well. Please let me know in the comments how it is going for you. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys. We're on a journey Looking back on the things that we've taken for granted But feels like we're learning To be better without what's been holding us back